you. Hello, Internet viewers. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer. Ever since I started this channel last year, I always have an ambition to review as many licensed games as possible, and most of them are based on Disney movies. I know I've done mostly Disney games this year with the live action remakes and whatnot, but I'd like to go back to reviewing games based on the Pixar films this time. As for which one, you may ask? How about we talk about Cars? Cars, as mentioned before, is an animated film by Disney and Pixar. While it first premiered at Lowe's Motor Speedway, now known as Charlotte Motor Speedway, on May 26, 2006, it got a theatrical release 14 days later. I saw the movie twice in theaters. To be perfectly honest, I love this movie, and it still holds up to this very day. The movie grossed over $450 million at the box office and received a score of 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. Throughout the movie's success, it spawned two sequels, two TV shows, and two short films. And of course, much like every Disney Pixar film at the time, there's always a video game tie-in. And thankfully, Cars had one. Which is why I'll be talking about Cars for the game to- <laughs> what? What's going on? Can some- Hello, Lucas. I mean, gamer. Seth? What are you doing here? Psst. I'm also called Zero Knight. Anyway, I couldn't help but notice that you were talking about cars. Yes, why do you ask? Well... Cars, believe it or not, is my personal favorite Pixar film and favorite animated Disney film. I know it's technically not the best, but it's still my personal favorite. This was the very first movie I saw in theaters twice, and I would always want to rewatch it on DVD whenever I got the chance. It has great characters, great animation, such memorable dialogue, and really, I just love cars in general. Not even just the Disney Pixar cars, but actual cars as well, even though I don't know that much about them. This film meant so much to me as a kid, and I still love it and quote it to this very day. And when I found out that the movie had a video game as well, I was instantly hyped because I always thought that cars would make for a really awesome racing game. That being said, I will be joining you for this review since I too have a lot of fond memories of this game. So, shall we begin? Of course! Let's do it! Let's roll. The game was developed by Rainbow Studios, the same people who worked on Star Wars Race to Revenge, and was released on June 6, 2006, about three days before the movie first premiered in theaters. The game was released for several different consoles, but for this review, we'll be talking about the GameCube version. The mode you'll most likely start with is the story mode, and when you select it, you'll be asked to choose between two difficulties, full size, which is the full experience, or compact, which is shorter and easier. That being said, don't choose compact since it doesn't have you play every race or mini game. You also can't get achievements in the Xbox 360 version while playing on this difficulty either, so yeah, be sure to choose full size when you first start off. The game starts off similarly to how the movie starts off. I am speed. One winner, four losers. Okay, let's do this. It's here we see that Mater is hosting a race known as the Radiator Springs Grand Prix. Aside from returning characters such as Doc, Sally, and Ramon entering the race, we also got a new character for this game named Fletcher. In fact, get used to seeing new characters for the game because there are a lot of characters that were created specifically for this game. I did hear that some of these characters were from concepts for the movie, but I'm not entirely sure if it's true or not. Let us know in the comments below if you happen to know. Anyway, after Lightning McQueen enters the race, we finally start the game. It's sad to see that there's no rocket start during the countdown, unlike another racing game that we know of. I personally don't think the lack of a rocket start is that big of a deal, since this is more in line of a traditional racer rather than a kart racer. But hey, that's just me. But other than that, the controls are pretty basic for a racing game. You drive with the A button and use the control stick to accelerate and steer. The goal for each race is to, of course, finish first in the race. I mean, that's kind of a given since it is a racing game after all. If you finish within the top three, you'll earn trophy points which are needed to unlock not only more races, but also minigames in order to progress through the story. But then it turns out that this whole race was actually a dream the whole time. Lightning? Are you in there? Lightning! What? Downshift. Uh, check her flag. Lightning, wake up! Oh, what, did I, did I win? I think you were dreaming. Actually, why don't we talk about the voice acting now? Pretty much everyone from the movie returned to voice their respective characters for the game, which means we got Owen Wilson as Lightning McQueen, Bonnie Hunt as Sally, Larry the Cable Guy as Mater, and the late Paul Newman as Doc Hudson, aka the Fabulous Hudson Hornet, just to name a few. Pretty much everyone sounds just as good here as they did in the movie, so not much to talk about there. So after Lightning wakes up, he's rubbed up and ready to continue racing for the Piston Cup. 
Whoa, you said it. Just as soon as you get some practice. Well, you've been taking it kind of easy around town for a while now, so we got to get you back into shape before the new season starts. Besides, they just don't let anybody with four wheels race for the Piston Cup, you know. First, you've got to place in enough races, games, and competitions to qualify. Then you can go back to the big leagues, all right? So as you can see, this game takes place right after the events of the movie. And honestly, it's a pretty clever idea. Wouldn't you agree, Seth? Well, the game does take place after the movie, but the game also released three days before the movie came out. So it kind of does spoil a lot of the movie. So I wouldn't recommend playing this game unless you've watched the movie at least once. But aside from that, I actually do like the setting for the game as well. We then head straight to the hub world where you get to explore a large part of the Radiator Springs. Personally, I love how every bit of Radiator Springs was very well executed from the movie. Exploring Radiator Springs was always one of my favorite parts of the game. This was also one of the first times I was first exposed to an open world to drive around in a racing game. I can't remember if it was the first, but it's definitely one of my earliest first exposures to a hub in a racing game. That being said, I really love how the hub is actually populated with cars driving around. They'll even say hello when you occasionally pass by, or they'll yell at you for crashing into them. Watch it, Mr. Race Car! You may have also noticed that during races, you earn points depending on what driving techniques you perform, such as power sliding, making a big jump, etc. You can also collect these lightning bolts in the hub that give you bonus points. All of these points are used to unlock new cars, new paint jobs, and other bonus content such as clips from the movie, concept art from the game, and even deleted scenes for the game. The hub world has three different types of event you can enter. Road races, mini games, and piston cop races. Let's start off with the first of the mini games, Lizzie's Postcard Hunt. Lightning drives into Lizzie's when he notices some old postcards lying on her desk. Unfortunately, Lightning accidentally knocks over a shelf, causing a nut to fall onto a fan and thus turning it on, causing the postcards to get blown away. <gasps> it's a blizzard! Don't worry, Lizzie, I'll find them. They can't have gone too far. Yeah, uh, funny you should say that, Lightning. Unlike all the other mini games, this one strictly takes place in the hub world. There are 20 postcards to find in the hub, and collecting one will give you a trophy point and will always ask you to save the game each time you find one. However, despite this minigame opening up at the very beginning of the game, you won't actually be able to find and collect all 20 postcards immediately, for reasons I'll get to later. One of the first road races you enter is Sally's Sunshine Circuit, and it's here where Sally meets two certain fans of lightning you may remember from the movie. I'm Mia! I'm Tia! We're his biggest fans! Okay, wow, well, that's... charming. Mia and Tia want to go out for a drive with lightning. So Sally challenges them to a three-lap race, promising that the winner will get to take a drive with lightning. Also, Flo decides to join the race simply because, why not? Unlike the previous races, you actually get to race as Sally instead of lightning, because some events have you playing as other characters. More on that later. Let's move on to a minigame based on a scene from the movie, Tractor Tipping. Only this time, it's lightning who invites Mayor to go tractor tipping with him. <laughs> this is gonna be fun! The object is to, of course, tip all the tractors while they're sleeping but be sure to avoid Frank as well as the searchlights around the field. There's a meter on the left that shows how angry Frank is. If it maxes out, well... Oh! Oh! <laughs> He's going in! There's also a time limit. If time runs out or if you get caught by Frank, you have to start the stage over. While I love this minigame as a whole, I just think it's a bit too dark, and I say that literally. There are times where you can't find their main tractors whether or not they've been tipped over. I personally feel like you have an issue with your TV's brightness, because I didn't really have that much trouble with finding the tractors at all. And don't you just love how Mayor's horn sounds exactly like how it does in the movie? <laughs> that is a nice touch, yeah. That being said, I personally think this minigame is just okay. I do like how you actually get to redo a famous scene from the movie, and the controls work well enough, but I feel like the physics can be a bit wonky at times, specifically when it comes to crossing these wagons. Also, this minigame is painfully annoying in the Wii version because you can't control the camera in that version, so it's very easy to get blindsided by Frank in that version. Good thing the other versions let you control the camera and thus making it easier to observe your surroundings. Moving on to the next minigame, Doc's Lesson Power Slide. This minigame teaches you how to power slide, even if you figure out how to do it yourself in the first race. It's basically a simple three lap race around Willie's Pews that shows you that you'll need to power slide for specific turns. If you don't power slide, yeah, that will happen. That being said, let's talk about the control. The cars do control pretty well for the most part, but the power sliding is where I feel like it can be a bit off. 
mainly because there are some turns I feel like you can't make without slowing down, even when you power slide. It's especially apparent in the Sarge's boot camp minigame, but we'll get to that later. Personally, I think the game controls pretty well. But yeah, turning in this game can be a bit hectic, which is why I should advise you to power slide whenever you see a turn. Otherwise, you could potentially understeer and cause you to bump into a wall and therefore cause you to slow down, especially when you're racing. My advice would be to use the brake or e-brake while you are power sliding. It will definitely help a lot with the tighter turns. Also, the crash physics can be a bit all over the place at times, though I'll admit it can also be pretty funny to look at. Moving on to the next road race, Doc's Challenge. It's just another race, only it's a one-on-one -on -one race between Lightning and Doc. Though after you finish the race, you get another cutscene where it turns out that Chick Hicks was watching them the whole time. And speaking of which, you then unlock the first Piston Cup race, Palm Mile Speedway. Daryl Cartrip recaps what happened in the previous Piston Cup season, which you probably already know if you've seen the movie. As Lightning and Guido get ready for the race, they're greeted by Chick. Check it out. So, big deal. Well, you know, I just figured you might want to get acquainted with the view. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, because you're going to be spending a lot of time behind me. In the race. We're going to be in the race, and I'll be ahead of you, and we'll be behind me. In the race! Is it me? Is it, what are we not getting here? The Piston Cup races are unlike any other race in this game. Why is that? Because there's no power sliding in these races. All you have is lighting against 19 other cars, including Chick, in a 12-lap race. During these races, you also have a mirror showing how much tire wear you have. When it reaches a certain point, you'll be asked to make a pit stop when you're close to the finish line. The pit stops are basically short, quick time events. Nothing bad, but nothing really that special. Although I do like the sound effects for Guido changing the tires. Once you finish the pit stop, you'll then have unlimited tire pressure for the rest of the race. I think the Piston Cup races are just okay. I don't think they're that bad to be perfectly honest. While you are stripped away from additional movesets such as power sliding, I think they're just typical racing levels. There are certain times where you can cheat your way to victory by off-roading yourself to reset your car further on the track, but that's not always guaranteed to work. I personally think the Piston Cup races are pretty meh, honestly. They're not terrible, but they're kind of boring in comparison to the road races. Like the gamer said earlier, you don't have as many moves or driving techniques as you would in the road races. And furthermore, these races tend to have some pretty bad rubber banding AI. Because there were a lot of times when I was in first, only for Chick Hex or another car to suddenly pull ahead at ridiculous speed. Not only that, but even the NASCAR video games at least had some sort of drafting mechanic to give you some sort of boost to help you pull ahead. This game doesn't really have that, so it feels like you mostly rely on luck to pull ahead. Plus, these races constantly artificially populate the track with cars by purposefully having them overlap just for the sake of having another obstacle to avoid. So yeah, not the worst, but I feel like these races could have been a lot better. Since we haven't mentioned it yet, I think now would be a good time to talk about the soundtrack. Personally, I love it. It has everything from rock, pop, and even country. While the game has some well-known songs such as Night Drive from the all American Rejects, White Knuckle Ride by Leonard Skinner, and Free Ride by the Edgar Winter Group, it also features original music by Bruno Kuhn, who is also the music editor for the film. I love the Radiator Springs music because it has a nice western feel to it that makes it feel more lively. And overall, the soundtrack is pretty good. I agree, I also really love the music for this game. While I do find it disappointing that the game didn't have any of the licensed songs from the movie, specifically Life is a Highway by Rascal Flatts and especially Real Gun by Sheryl Crow, seriously, those songs were my jam, I do agree that the selection we did get was quite excellent. And I also really love the original music composed by Bruno Kuhn, especially the themes of The Sheriff's Hot Pursuit, High Speed Heist, and Lightning Strikes Back minigames. We return to Radiator Springs with the next minigame, Luigi to the Rescue. Lightning informs Luigi that there are hubcaps and tires lying around Radiator Springs. Seeing how Luigi loves his tires, he decides to get the tires back himself. My poor tires, abandoned, alone, dirty. Luigi will go save them. This minigame is just a simple find and collect them all before time runs out minigame. Though you do have a radar to help you show where all the tires are. You also have to return to Luigi's Casadella tires once you find them all. This minigame is just okay. The objective isn't really anything special, but this is the only time you ever get to play as Luigi, so yeah. Yeah, I do agree with you that it's a collect-a-thon minigame. Having a radar helps you out when trying to find all the tires, not to mention there are also white arrows that highlight where each of the tires are. Overall, yeah, it's pretty okay. Also, is it just me, or does the music sound an awful lot like the pizza theme from Spider-Man 2? It certainly has a very similar melody, but it's not quite the exact same song. On to the next race, Boosted with Fillmore. 
And this is where we're introduced to a new mechanic. We saw off of the cutscene where Phil Morales McQueen trialed a new special brew. Whoa, Fillmore, what's in that? Good stuff, huh? I call it my super octane boost juice. You think it'll help me go faster? <laughs> Only one way to find out, man. It's here when we're finally introduced to boosting. You have a meter that shows how much boost you have. Once you run out of boost, the meter will eventually automatically refill gradually so you can continue boosting. However, you can't use boosting in the piston cup races, which is pretty lame. I mean, I can kinda understand not being allowed what's basically nitrous oxide in what's basically a NASCAR race, but they could have at least introduced a drafting mechanic that could refill your boost. It's basically what the NASCAR arcade has, and I love that mechanic, but I find it disappointing that this game doesn't at least have a similar mechanic. But despite that, I really do enjoy boosting in the road races and mini games. I love the boost mechanic in this game. It gives you more speed whenever you need it. Personally, I use it right when the race begins just to give me a fast start. Also, it's best used whenever you fall behind in a race, assuming you still have boost when it happens. I know that the boosting mechanic in the Piston Cup races would be considered cheating, but I personally don't mind that. Overall, I think the boost mechanic is an excellent addition to the game. On to the next minigame, Sarge's Boot Camp. Sarge informs Lightning that he is in need of off-road training. As a result, Lightning needs to race three laps around the course that's filled with a lot of obstacles to avoid and jump over. Speaking of which, this is the minigame where you're taught how to jump, but just like power sliding, you could do this move since the very beginning, so it all comes down to whether or not you figured it out already. This minigame has three stages with each course getting harder as you progress. This minigame is fine, but I feel like it could have been better since I really like the concept. This is also the minigame where I first start having problems with the power sliding. I mean, just look at these sharp hairpin turns. Power sliding alone won't help you make these turns without slowing down using the brake or e-brake, so keep that in mind while racing on these courses. I agree that Sarge's Boot Camp is a great minigame in concept. The level design is ambitious, and even the music used in this minigame has a military feel to it. While I did run through some problems here and there, especially with the turning, I will agree that this minigame is pretty alright. You look overheated, Private McQueen. Yes. Exhausted. Yes. You'd like nothing better than a hot car wash, a cool ration of fuel, and a nice shady garage. Oh, yes please. Well, too bad! We're gonna go for a little drive! Which leads us to the next race, Sarge's Off-Road Challenge. This is actually one of my favorite tracks in the game. You can get some serious airtime with one of the jumps, and I love driving through the large canyon. Nothing much more to say, I just really like this course. Yeah, nothing much else to add other than it's an off-road race in Radiator Springs, and a fun one at that. Moving on, we get to race on Motor City Speedway of the South. This is the exact same course from the beginning of the movie, and it's pretty much the same as every other Prison Cup race. I do like how we actually get to race on a track featured in the movie, but yeah, nothing else more to say. That being said, when you do finish the race, Radiator Springs will be set to nighttime. Because depending on what events you finish, the Radiator Springs hub will be set either during the day or during the night. Moving on, we have another minigame that introduces yet another skill, Mater's Backwards Lesson. Lighting asked the world's best backwards driver himself, Mater, to teach him how to drive backwards. It's a two lap race that requires you to start driving backwards whenever Mater does it as well. You can start driving backwards by quickly flipping lightning around by double tapping the e-brake. It even works in the piston cup races and you can pretty much do this. What? It's also worth mentioning that every time you get close to Mater, lightning will automatically slow down to prevent you from passing him. Not a major issue, but I couldn't help but find it a bit distracting at times. On to the next race, Sheriff's Chase. When the Sheriff and Lightning start reminiscing about the time Lightning first made a mess in Radiator Springs, Lightning mentions that he was constantly slowed down during that first chase. So Sheriff's Chase has a challenge for another race. Wait a second. You're not going to bust me for speeding and throw me into the impound afterwards, are you? No, sir. Not if you win. It's here where we're introduced to what's probably the longest track in the entire game. It's a one-lap race around Radiator Springs that also goes into Ornament Valley. It's a pretty cool course, nothing much else left to say. Although winning this race does have my favorite dialogue exchange in the entire game. Just what do you think you're doing, son? What? I thought all cops like donuts. Donuts! I love donuts! Get out of here! After the race, you'll then unlock Sheriff's Hot Pursuit. This minigame has you playing as a sheriff and chasing down three speeders for each round. But if you think this will also mean stopping the speeders by ramming into them, like in the Need for Speed series, well, you're probably going to be disappointed. Instead, you bust speeders by simply tailgating them until a meter runs out. 
And much like in Mater's backwards lesson, you'll automatically slow down if you get too close to the speeder you're chasing. This minigame is still fun, just not quite as fun as I was hoping it would be. Also, as I said earlier, the music for this minigame is really good, especially the guitar. Yeah, I actually like Sheriff's Hot Pursuit as well. Even though you have to be behind every speeder you chase, I think it's similar to what most cop chases are like. Plus, it can take place during the night or day depending on what time of day it is at that point of the game. Also, if you manage to lose track of any speeder you're currently chasing, then this happens. <sighs> Maybe it's time to go see Doc again. Aside from Sheriff's Hot Pursuit, finishing Sheriff's Chase will also unlock a new hub world, Ornament Valley. And this is exactly why you can't finish Lizzie's postcard hunt as soon as you start it. Some of the postcards are hidden in not only Ornament Valley, but also Tailfin Pass, and you can't drive around those areas until you reach certain points in the story. But anyway, Ornament Valley is also where you can compete in the next race, the Rust Bucket Race Arama. Let me guess, Demolition Derby. Yep, it's my favorite racing track in the whole world. It's here where he races Mater in a short, crazy eight dirt track course with 12 laps total. Yeah, we surprisingly have a race with 12 laps that isn't a Piston Cup race, so that's pretty neat. This race is fine, but the crash physics can also be pretty wonky in this race. I mean, it makes sense for this race to be that crazy, but yeah. It's also worth mentioning that once you win this race, Mater will give Lightning an extra boost tank and thus increasing the size of the boost meter. And now we have the next Piston Cup race, Sun Valley International Speedway. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but there's also an announcer you hear during every Piston Cup race. And you hear a different voice clips from him depending on what character you're playing as. But seeing as this is story mode in which you only play as Lightning McQueen, expect to hear a lot of the same repeated voice clips for every one of these races. Right through the pack, it's number 95, Lightning McQueen. There's another one. McQueen's passing through the field like he's racing against golf cart. Is there any stop in Lightning McQueen? McQueen is driving like the field is standing still. This is honestly my least favorite Piston Cup race. I mean, it looks nice, but I swear the rubber banding AI is at its worst during this race. Not to mention the turns can also be pretty annoying at times, but hey, that's just me. After winning the race, you then unlock the third and final hub, Tailfin Pass, and it's here we move on to the next road race, Sally's Wheelwell Sprint. Remember when Sally won her drive with Lightning in a race against Mia and Tia? Well, now we actually get to play that drive. Well, as Lightning, anyway. Unlike the previous races, this one is a point-to-point -point race, which means there's a starting line and a finish line at separate locations from each other. That being said, Tailfin Pass is personally my favorite hub in the game. Not just because it's pretty, but also because it has a lot of alternate pathways and hidden areas to drive around. It's so much fun. That being said, what is your favorite of the three hubs, gamer? I feel like all three hubs do their job pretty well. Tailfin Pass is pretty to look at with the waterfall and even wheel well. And yes, there are just little pathways to take for exploring around the area. Radiator Springs is a central location of the game, and I personally feel like it's the most memorable hub in the game. Ornament Valley is probably my least favorite hub world in this game. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad hub by any means, it still does its job pretty well. It's just that it's personally my least favorite of the three hubs. And what's it like, you may ask? Well, in the words of Anakin Skywalker, It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Moving on, we have the next race, Delinquent Road Hazards. It's here where Lightning comes across the tuner cars who are blocking the road. Lightning then challenges them to a race, telling them to let him pass, as well as have Boost give him another boost tank if he wins. Actually, while we're still on the topic of the tuner cars, it's worth mentioning that Boost spoiler looks very different from how it appears in the movie. Unless you're playing the Xbox 360, PSP, or Wii versions in which it looks exactly like how it appears in the movie. Just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, it's pretty much yet another race, but this time it takes place in the mines for half of the race. Nothing else more to say other than that. Lightning wins, he gets another boost tank, and the tuner cars leave. Moving on, we have another road race, Monster Truck Mayhem. Lightning is challenged to a race by three monster trucks, so Luigi and Guido have Lightning souped up with big monster truck tires. And if I'm being completely honest, he looks ridiculous as a monster truck. I mean, just look at him. A tiny race car with big monster truck tires. Though I'll admit, it's also quite funny to look at. Oh yeah, you have the tires, but do you have the mental fortitude? We're about to find out. Let's do this! This race takes place at Rust Bucket, and it's pretty much a double oval track with a lot of jumps. This race is actually pretty fun, despite the physics being a bit finicky at times. Overall, this race is quite a nice surprise, despite being pretty much a filler race. And while we're on the topic of that, 
There were a couple of races we didn't mention earlier, such as Radiator Cap Circuit, North Desert Dash, Ornament Valley Circuit, and Tailfent Pass Circuit. These races don't really have a huge bearing on the story and are pretty much filler races. They do feature new characters, but they all mainly serve the same purpose, to be new characters for Lightning to race against, and they don't really have much in personality. Although I do like this exchange of dialogue here before you race on North Desert Dash. They are loving my gold. Now, why gold, my dear boy? This is all about winning. You cannot take first place if you do not look the part. Oh, and how do you know you can best us in the next competition? Easy. I see you have silver on your rims. He's got a point there. The only one who kinda comes close to being essential to the story is this red muscle car named Vince from Queens, since he came to Radiator Springs to train with Chick Hicks, but he's still for the most part a very minor character. There's also another filler race known as Doc's Checkup. It's shown in a cutscene in which Doc apparently gives Lightning a new upgrade, but when you actually race, you don't really feel any different from the previous races. I can't help but feel like there was a missed opportunity for that race. Moving on, we have the next road race, Chick's Challenge. When Lightning decides to visit the cars from Queens, he's greeted by Chick Hicks, who challenges him to a road race. Lightning does manage to win, but Chick, of course, doesn't take the loss very well. See you at the stadium. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'll see you. If you ever make it there. What's that supposed to mean? Well, we're about to find out in the next minigame, The High Speed Heist. Mac is seen driving around the interstate at night, but then we see that the tuner cars are playing something. That being said, this minigame puts you in control of DJ, Boost, and Wingo in that order. Each of the three stages all have you chasing down Mac while avoiding traffic and then fulfilling a specific objective when you catch up to him. DJ simply has to pull ahead of Mac. Boost needs to use a ramp provided by Snotride to jump on top of Mac, causing his trailer to open. And finally, Wingo needs to collect Lightning's gear falling out of Mac's trailer while also avoiding everything else that happens to fall out of him since it will slow you down. In my opinion, High Speed Heist is not as bad as you think it is. While the DJ and Boost sections are something that I'm okay with, I cannot stand Wingo's section at all. Especially when you're behind Mac. Not to mention there's also a time limit for each section of the minigame. But going back to Wingo, there's no telling what's going to come out of Mac's trailer, and you have to be at the right spot whenever the boxes come out. Otherwise, you'll miss it and therefore making the section much harder than it needs to be. But besides that, I think it's an okay minigame. The High Speed Heist is personally my favorite minigame in the game, mainly because it's the only time in the entire game when you ever get to play as DJ and Boost. More on that later. As for Wingo's section, I personally feel like you just need good enough reflexes to react to what's going to fall out of Mac's trailer. If you have that, then this minigame really isn't much trouble at all. Also, as I said earlier, the music is pretty fantastic, so yeah. So after the tuner cars rob Mac, we then unlock the next minigame, Lightning Strikes Back. Sheriff informs Lightning of Mac getting robbed by the tuner cars, and let's just say that Lightning doesn't take it very well. That's it. You can mess with me, but you don't mess with my friends. In this minigame, Lightning needs to chase down the tuner cars while also driving on the opposite side of the road for some reason. So get used to hearing the cars yelling at you for driving on the wrong side of the road. I mean, it's technically the correct side of the road, but only for specific countries such as England and Japan, so yeah. Anyway, you need to bump into each of the four tuner cars three times in order to get Lightning's stuff back. So keep in mind that you cannot boost in this minigame. Overall, it's a pretty simple and straightforward minigame. After Lightning manages to catch the tuner cars, they reveal that stealing Lightning's gear wasn't their idea. Wingo describes their hirer as a green race car with a mustache, so it's pretty obvious who he's talking about. Ah, chick. And that's when we unlock the next Piston Cup race, Smasherville International Speedway. This is actually the easiest of the Piston Cup races, mainly because the turns are very easy to make, and it's also the shortest track in the entire game. Not much else to say other than that. But after Lightning wins, Chick doesn't take it very well and starts complaining and accusing the Lightning of winning by pure luck. Lightning then offers to race Chick again. Oh yeah? Okay, good. How about tomorrow night? How about right here? How about tomorrow night right here? This is incredible! Lightning versus Chick in an all-out grudge match! Actually, Daryl, I've got something better in mind. The Radiator Springs Grand Prix. Three races, one in each part of Ornament Valley, and ending with one last Piston Cup race. Can we do that? We can now. Unbelievable. This is going to be a week of racing like nobody's ever seen. Chick, do you accept Lightning's challenge? Yeah, of course I do. 
And so it begins. You have four races for the Radiator Springs Grand Prix. One in Radiator Springs, one in Tilfin Pass, one in Ornament Valley, and one at Los Angeles International Speedway. The very same speedway that appeared at the end of the movie. And Jake Hicks is always competing in all four of these races. He's the ugly green car with the mustache, right? Hey! Who you calling ugly? Spit cup? So yeah, after finishing the Radiator Springs Grand Prix and the final Piston Cup race, Lightning is eventually crowned the new Piston Cup champion, and thus going from rookie to veteran. Lightning then celebrates by going for a drive with Doc, Sally, and Mater. And during the post credit scene, because yes, there is a post credit scene in this game, we see where Lightning decides to keep his trophy, right next to where Doc Hudson's old trophies are displayed. And that concludes the story mode for this game. Now, on to the other modes! First up is Arcade Mode, which lets you replay any previously unlocked road race, Piston Cup race, or minigame. However, this leads to my biggest problem with this game, the playable characters, or rather, the lack thereof. This game only has a whopping 12 characters to play as, 13 if you count Lightning's monster truck form as a separate character, but I personally feel like there should have been twice as many playable characters. In fact, I'm surprised they didn't use all of the characters they have assets for to be playable in general. For example, remember the tuner cars you got to play as in the High Speed Heist? Well, you can only play as one of them in the road races, Wingo. Why can't I play as DJ and Boost? They're clearly capable of being played as in the minigame, so why can't I use them in the road races? It's such a missed opportunity and really disappoints me, especially since I think Boost is the coolest looking tuner car. Plus, if they really could only make one of the tuner cars playable in the road races, why did they choose Wingo? He's the most ridiculous looking of the tuner cars. I would much rather play as Boost or heck, even Snot Rod. Another problem I have is that some characters can only be used in specific races. For example, why are the King and Daryl Cartrip only playable in the Piston Cup races? I feel like they could have and should have been playable in the road races as well. I mean, if Chick can keep up with Lightning and Dirt races, I don't see why the King or Daryl wouldn't be able to race on the dirt as well. But yeah, that's pretty much my biggest problem with the game. Anyway, now would be a good time to talk about the multiplayer. Now, if only I had someone to play with. Hey gamer, did you say multiplayer? Um, yes, I believe I did. Mind if I join in? No. Yeah, sure, why not? Awesome, dude! The multiplayer mode doesn't have much change except for a split screen for each race or minigame. However, there is one minigame that is specifically available in this mode. Remember the pit stop challenge that happens in between the Piston Cup races? Well, it turns out there is a minigame exclusive to multiplayer that challenges you to see who can do more pit stops than their opponent before time runs out. It's also worth mentioning that while playing multiplayer mode, you can't play every road race or minigame. You only have access to a specific number of road races and minigames to play, which is pretty disappointing. Oh man, I was really hoping to play Sally's Wheelbell Sprint with you, gamer. Well, Hux, that's what the game developers decided. Makes sense, I guess. Anyway, later, dude! So, gamer, what did you think of Cars, the video game? Well, Seth, as a whole, this game's actually pretty fun. It has everything needed for a licensed game, especially one that has racing elements. Graphically, it looks incredible, as if each element was taken from the movie. Everything from the characters, levels, and even the hub worlds look like the film. When it comes to gameplay, it works pretty well despite the issues I had with turning. Not to mention that the Piston Cup races feel repetitive to me. I love the power slide and boost mechanics in this game. While it would have been better to have these elements used for the Piston Cup races, I think it would be considered cheating in my opinion. If you're a Disney fan who loved the movie as a kid and would run a race against his or her friends, then this is the game for you. Cars, the video game, is quite impressive for a licensed game. Most of the racing is fun, the graphics are pretty nice, Exploring Radiator Springs, Ornament Valley, and especially Tailfin Pass was always a joy for me to do, and I've always admired just how much personality this game has. However, I won't lie. While I loved this game as a kid, it certainly has aged over time. While the road races are easily the best part of the game, the mini games are just kind of okay and the Piston Cup races are pretty bland. And again, I find the playable character roster to be pretty lacking. It's also worth mentioning that this game is very easy. Nothing that really bothers me personally, but I know that it may or may not bother some other people. But despite those issues, I still enjoy going back to this game every now and then, usually when I'm feeling nostalgic. It's not the best racing game out there, but I still enjoyed my time with it. I would actually like to see this game get remastered for current generation consoles that not only sport better graphics, but also a much larger playable roster. 
I know it's unlikely for it to happen, but hey, a guy can dream. If you love or like the movie, consider checking out the game as well. I give this game a 7 out of 10. But overall, this is pretty good. I'm the Fairly Odd Gamer, and I wish you all good luck the rest of your day or night, wherever you- Hold up, gamer. We're not done yet. Wait, we're not? Nope. We still have to talk about the handheld versions of this game. Oh. Well, okay. Sure thing.